Welcome back. The Palestinian leadership at the United Nations has announced that it will work to introduce a Security Council resolution in opposing the proposed Middle East peace plan revealed by United States President Donald Trump this week. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas will travel to various meetings, including the African Union Summit, to lobby support against the plan before addressing the Security Council in the next two weeks. All right, uh, for more on this story, we're joined from our Pretoria studio by... Uh, all right, let's take a look at the clip first. What have you been delivering? Palestine's representative emerging after a brief meeting with the current president of the Security Council as efforts are underway to coordinate a collective response in rejecting the Trump plan. Any proposal that is not rooted in the international consensus to end the occupation and to uh, allow for the independence of the sovereign state of Palestine with East Jerusalem as, ca as its capital and any changes to the borders of the 1967 cannot be agreed to without the approval of the parties through negotiation. The deal proposes a discontiguous Palestinian state in parts of the West Bank and Gaza. The United States would recognize illegal Israeli settlements in exchange for a four-year freeze to allow for direct negotiations. Jerusalem, including its old city, would be the undivided capital of Israel, while a few outlying suburbs of East Jerusalem would constitute the capital of a future Palestinian state. Israel would retain control of the Jordan Valley, while the plan also denies Palestinian refugees the right of return. Mansour referred to the plan as contrary to peace. We believe that the Trump plan, Trump Netanyahu plan, which is an attempt to destroy the national rights of the Palestinian people, will fail. Earlier, the main author of the plan defended it. If the Palestinians reject this and they don't do negotiations, they've put themselves in a totally undefensible position. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. A South African government statement said it continued to support international efforts towards a viable Palestinian state. Pretoria said it maintained the principal position that any peace plan should prevent Palestinian statehood from devolving into an entity devoid of sovereignty, territorial contiguity and economic viability, while cautioning that only initiatives developed with the full participation of the Palestinian people could achieve lasting peace. Sherman Bryceby's SABC News, New York. Right, let's continue that conversation uh, from our Pretoria studio, uh, Ambassador Hanan Jarar of the Palestine. A very good morning to you, Ambassador. Thank you so much for making the time. Good morning to you and thank you for hosting me for this critical uh, moment. We were listening to that conversation there, uh, Mr. Riyad Mansour, just uh, summarizing uh, the Palestine's response, but just... Uh, Break that response, that the, the complete response down for us, uh, your response to this peace plan that was announced by U.S. President Donald Trump. Um, well, first of all, as everyone knows, it's a, a Trump plan. It's a Trump-Netanyahu plan. Uh, so basically, it's a unilateral plan uh, uh, written by the occupier, the occupying power Israel, and it's a lie, unfortunately, which is supposed to be the broker for the uh, peace process in, in, in uh, the Middle East. It's a unilateral uh, plan. They call it a vision for uh, peace. We call it a vision for apartheid. Because basically, it uh, um, um, says that the problem with Palesti in Palestine is not the colonial occupation. It says the problem is the Palestinians as terrorists, which is, of course, not the, the true story or the true narrative of the whole Palestinian cause. Um, how did they 
write the plan. They write it unilaterally. As you can see uh, here on the TV, the plan is mainly focusing on confiscating and denying the Palestinian national rights, the economic, social, religious, and every kind of right in, in uh, uh, liberty and equality. So how can Palestinians, after 25 years of, of uh, uh, believing in uh, Oslo Accord as um, uh, a mean for peace, now accept such a kind of vision uh, that basically based on putting the largest number of Palestinians into body stands and leaving the maximum land free for the Israelis to make use uh, of. This is the whole issue of, of uh, the plan. It's a plan uh, for creating apartheid on the ground that the Palestinians will not ever accept. The plan focuses on um, many uh, uh, dimensions. First of all, Jerusalem, which is supposed to be the capital of the state of Palestine, is Jerusalem. It says Jerusalem should be undivided under the Israeli control, which means that Palestinians, both Muslims and Christians, are not allowed to go to their sacred places without permit from Israel. And this is also uh, changing the status quo on the holy city of Jerusalem, which under international law is still called um, uh, separatum, which is an individual entity in international uh, law. What about borders? As we see from the plan, the Palestinian uh, uh, proposed uh, state shall be surrounded by a sea of Israelis. We have no control over our borders. Uh, we have no access to the, in, to the world but through Israel. Israel is surrounding us from everywhere. There is no geographical connectivity between West Bank and Gaza. West Bank is, is, uh, um, has many holes as uh, the Israeli settlements. So this is merely is not a state. It is an open air prison and this is also again leads us to apartheid where if Palestinians are in small cantons with no geographical connectivity, no borders, nothing at all. Uh, what about uh, Palestinian refugees? We have six million Palestinians scattered all over the world in refuge. Those Palestinians are not allowed to get back to Palestine. Only a few number of them, maybe around 5,000, are allowed to go to Palestine. The others, uh, are, will be compensated either in a third uh, country or in uh, where they live or will be given money. How, how come such uh, 70 years of scattered in refuge be compensated in such a bad manner and a bad way? What this will, will provide for Palestinians and for the suffering and for the daily dehumanization that they have been facing for 70 years denying access to, to, to their homeland. Let's look again to uh, security. Yeah. The, the, Palesti the proposed Palestinian state is not allowed to have an army. It's not allowed to have any treaty or to enter any international organization. Actually, they requested the, 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 the proposed Palestinian state to withdraw immediately from all the treaties and international organizations, basically the ICC. And this is the bottom line. They are afraid of going to the ICC because they know that they will be convicted as war crime, the, the whole entity of Israel. And, and uh, this is the bottom line. Ambassador, we, as you're talking, we have on the screen the map of both Israel and the Palestine. And just talk to us to, uh, about how this map speaks to the different changes that have taken place since that historic 1967 agreements in terms of which territory belongs to Israel and which territory belongs to uh, Palestine and how these have been distorted through the years. Well, since 1967, many changes has been uh, happening to, to, to the geographical area of, of uh, the presence of uh, Palestinians and also that the areas that belong to Israel. Um, with the time, Israel started 
First of all, Israel didn't give any kind of respect to international law. First of all, in terms of the issue of uh, Jerusalem, because Jerusalem, according to international uh, law, is a uh, corpus separatum, is a place that should keep its status quo since 1967 until now. Israel didn't respect this. On the contrary, it starts to build many settlements around uh, Jeru Jerusalem. It built this kind of, of uh, uh, apartheid segregation wall that surrounds Jerusalem and uh, suffocating Palestinians in East uh, Jerusalem with very limited uh, area. And now they propose that under the total Israeli control of uh, Jerusalem, uh, many Palestinians will be thrown behind the wall so that inside Jerusalem, sorry, I'm still listening to you, Ambassador. Uh, yes. So, uh, even in West Bank, uh, uh, the number of settlements have been uh, duplicated or even tripled. Uh, in 1967, there has been around uh, 5,000 settlers in the Palestinian areas, in areas of 1967 war. Nowadays, we have around 700,000 settlers inside the Palestinian uh, um, lands of West Bank and uh, Gaza. This shows that uh, the Israelis at the first, they didn't have a vision for peace. They didn't want a viable Palestinian state. They want to, to disconnect their geographical connectivity by building settlements all over the area of uh, West Bank and uh, Gaza. They didn't respect international law in terms of um, uh, establishing a new settlements, which according to international law and UN resolutions, they constitute war crime and they should be removed as soon as possible. They didn't give them any respect to international law or uh, to, the, to the international community on, uh, on uh, this uh, issue. Ambassador, unfortunately, we... Yes. The Business Insider has a headline story that says Jared Kushner isn't even trying to sell his Middle East peace plan to the Palestinians. Did... Uh, President Donald Trump's point men in this conversation, Jared Kushner, even reach out to the Palestinians at all? No. They didn't reach to us. They didn't even ask our intervention in uh, such a, um, a plan because they want this plan to be um, uh, rejected by the Palestinians. They started in, in 2017 by recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. How can we accept that your capital is recognized by uh, another party as the capital of your occupier while you deny uh, the, the, you, you deny the right to have a, a capital according to Oslo Accord and according to international uh, treaties and uh, UN or, uh, resolutions on uh, this issue. They try to, to um, dismantle UNRWA, which in, uh, in a sign to uh, forget about refugees. What so is your response? 2017, yep. they give us signs that it is impossible for any Palestinian to accept any kind of a plan like this. All right, we have some social media uh, inter uh, interaction coming through regarding this conversation. Let's read uh, a, a tweet right now. John saying, Palestine already rejected it, so plan won't be implemented. That thus. It is back to the drawing board. What's so interesting is seeing how America constantly wants to dictate to other countries on how to resolve their matters. What is your response, uh, Ambassador, to the sentiment that questions the timing of this announcement, saying it's kind of like an effort on the American administration's side to push through, uh, to, to influence politics in Israel with elections coming up? Of course, the timing is very crucial. First of all, this plan is announced by an impeached 
uh, president of the U.S. Donald uh, Trump is impeached the president, so he's trying also to 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 have a very good uh, picture for his uh, ele coming elections. Uh, as for Netanyahu, he's um, also accused of um, property and misuse of public um, uh, money, and also he wants uh, this plan to be as an exit uh, to to regain his immunity in case he won the elections. So the whole plan is designed by a bunch of corrupted people uh, to save their uh, uh, backs uh, in their coming elections. Unfortunately, how can the international community, how, how can the Palestinians uh, stand up, uh, accept such a, such a plan that was really written by a bunch of corrupted people who want to save their uh, um, careers uh, on the backs of Palestinians. What has been the response of the Arab world to this uh, announcement? We've seen the Iranian leader and the Iranian foreign minister already tweeting uh, about their displeasure at this deal uh, that uh, they have called by different names instead of the deal of the century. Uh, we've also seen that uh, uh, solidarity coming out of different nations on the side of Palestine. Palestine. Yes, of course. In, in this context, first of all, I would like to thank the government of South Africa for standing always uh, with justice and standing always with Palestine. They issued a statement yesterday and it was very clear that they are going with the international community in supporting the Palestinian rights. As for the Arab world and the international community in general, there is a consensus by the international community to um, reject uh, uh, such a plan. Some uh, uh, countries here and they say that that we have to look deeply on on this um, proposed peace plan uh, but we do believe that the international community will continue to support the Palestinian uh, right and will continue to support the uh, uh, international law and the UN resolutions in terms of um, uh, Palestine all right we've been asking our viewers this morning to give their thoughts on this conversation um, and as we were talking now about the solidarity uh, that has uh, emerged from different countries around the world in terms of response to this announcement but just officially what's the next step for Palestine well um, you know um, madam the short story of Palestinians uh, is that we survive. So basically, we will still surviving. We will stick to our homeland. We will stick to our lands. We will work on, on, on uh, uh, the steadfastness and resilience for the Palestinian uh, people. Uh, the Palestinian people deserve a better life. We will not sign and we will not accept such a plan for surrender. And we do believe that the international community will support us in, in this because no one will accept uh, the fall of the international uh, consensus on an issue like the Palestinian uh, one. After all, uh, this plan is issued by two parties, the occupier, the occupying power Israel and its ally US for reasons that everyone uh, knows. Uh, so basically, we will not sign, we will not accept, and we will not uh, uh, surrender our lives and the lives of the future generations uh, by accepting this uh, plan. Uh, Palestinians stand up for their principles, and they ask the international community also to stand up with them in this critical uh, junction. Ambassador Hanan Jarar, again, let's thank you for your time. That's a, a Palestinian ambassador to South Africa. We're also in conversation with Ayelet, the deputy head of the Israeli mission to South Africa. She has agreed to come in uh, at some point on this show. We'll let you know when that conversation takes place.